Welcome back to my Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling. As you will see what's going on on our lovely island of Thorn Hollow today, where we'll be, as you can see from the title, talking about Little Nightmares 2. This is not me recreating Little Nightmares 2 or whatever in Animal Crossing. This is just me in my video diary uh, talking, like, uh, I suppose it's kind of like a review from my perspective, like the worst review because it's not even like well researched or anything. It's literally just me spouting my opinions non stop for 20 minutes about a game. Um, now, normally when I when I do these sort of like review things, it's normally like immediately after the, um, the let's play for it is finished. But I think I just forgot <laughs> to do it last time. Um, so it's been like a week or more, more than a week, I think, since I actually finished Little Nightmares 2. So it's not quite fresh in my mind. So we'll give out a best shot anyway. Hello everyone, right now in Fawn Hollow, 6.03pm on Wednesday, December 21st, 2022. Um, yeah, and, oh, I also I did forget that I, I do need to record some other episodes today. Well, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Either that or I record tomorrow morning. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, Little Nightmares 2. Um, all in all, enjoyable game. You know, it, it, I feel like basically what I'm going to say is quite similar to Little Nightmares 1, except for, you know, slightly improved, because I think it is it is better than Little Nightmares 1, in my opinion. It has been a while since I played Little Nightmares 1, though, so, you know, you, your mileage may vary, but... Um, Basically, what I'd summarise my thoughts on Little Nightmares as a whole, as a series in whole, like from these two games, is because, you know, I enjoy them in very sort of similar ways. It's the fact that I love the atmosphere and the environment they create. Like, they, they are almost, like, unmatched, like, w w w in that department. Like, <laughs> very few other games, I think, like, so perfectly nail the exact atmosphere, the environment that they're trying to go for, like and the, the, the sort of whimsical horror world which Little Nightmares has laid out for you. It's just so perfectly encapsulated with the design elements and the scenic moments I suppose you have in the game. Uh, the, the creature design is pretty cool in, on, on the whole. Um, I, I think Little Nightmares... Does Little Nightmares 1 have called a... And it's different, I suppose. Little Nightmares 1, it feels a bit more sort of uh, in the realm of, like, grotesque, fanta fantastical horror, I suppose, is how I describe it. You know, of daddy, um, spoilers, I suppose, for, for both games, actually. Because uh, uh, the first game has Daddy Long Arms, I've always known as... I can't remember, like, The Butcher or something, Surgeon? No, it doesn't sound like but I think it's The Butcher, no, if I might not be right. I'm not trying to go an online play. What are you... Are you losing your mind? Um, with, like, his really, really long arms and very sort of sinisterly, like, large grim. And um, the, the chefs with their very sort of, like, melting um, face sort of ex um, appearance is probably how I describe it. And um, I can't remember what the final boss is in that, that third place. Oh, and then, the, the, like, the, the gorged out um, diner guests. Are all very much in a sort of grotesque horror element is what I'd say. Uh, while Little Nightmares 2, it doesn't, it does have that element as well. And I'd certainly say that um, it, it just, it feels like the energy feels a bit different. It doesn't feel like grotesque horror per sense, but it feels like a very sort of different, not, I'm not sure if understated horror is the right word, but very much, very much sort of like, um, not like eldritch, but like, you know, that, that feeling of eldritch. It was sort of like, you you really are a tiny being and like a, a huge, like, place out of your like own conception um your own imagination is probably how i describe it and what i mean by that is like um, mega spoilers i suppose it's definitely the, the, I, I can't remember his name <laughs> the, the, the tv man the thin man or whatever very much feels like um, a different sort of step in a direction compared to um um some of the other bosses i'm not saying this is bad by the way like i, I would like to preface none of this is bad i'm just like it gives a different feeling um and i suppose by the color palette as well it's actually quite different because obviously there's a very sort of like murky green yellow brownish sort of colors in the first little nightmares um are quite prominent which makes the entire thing feel like very dirty and like gross i suppose in that sense well um but very sort of cool blues of a little nightmares too makes things feel like sort of like I don't know, to me, to me it feels like there's a level of like disconnection, like washed out, sort of like a, a, set, a creeping sense of eeriness rather than like grossness, you know, which I think really encapsulates the moods better. And I'm not saying whatever designs aren't cool, I actually quite like a lot of Little Nightmares 2 designs. I will say the Hunter's perhaps the least horror-esque of most of them, he, he, you know, he, he, there's nothing like sort of like whimsical as, or say fantastically horror, horrific about him, he just is kind of like... A hunter dude which is you know fair enough <laughs> i think he's still pretty cool but yeah again i haven't actually looked at his design up close i also might be misremembering because that was that must have been like it was in halloween i think when i started recording so it's been like three months or something since i um no two months i can't do maths until i really recorded that episode uh, the teacher is still my favorite um boss out of all of them um, about both games because i think she's very interesting uh her design is you know it, it's nice because it's sort of like um, a fake out sort of design like yes she looks like a very sort of creepy 
being i suppose like on her face value but then it's not until she starts just stretching her neck where you're just like whoa what is going on um the hospital itself but the hospital boss but like the doctor the surgeon i don't know what his official name is is probably i, I think he's kind of cool the way he like climbs on the ceiling i don't it, his design didn't particularly strike out to me all that much but anyway the, the, the pale uh, pale man that's it i looked it up like you know uh, always uh, Always after I, I play the games, I always try and look up information about them. Uh, the Pale Man, I think he, he's actually got a pretty cool design. But I, I'm also interested in, like, their movements, I suppose, in Little Nightmares too. It's such a weird thing to talk about, but over the designs. Like, obviously, the, the Pale Man has a very distinctive movement where he's very slow and methodical. And then, like, when he's going, when he wants to, like, move in a quickened pace, he teleports. But he does a little thing where he looks like he's ducking into to an invisible dory where he goes, like, and he blips in front of you that's a very cool movement the teacher rather than like chasing after you just stretches out her neck to like unimaginable lengths with very like sort of like glassy eyed like psychotic expression on the face very cool movement subversion and then um of course the surgeon he crawls on the ceiling that's pretty bad that's pretty wild and different in its own right but the surgeon unfortunately didn't get a lot of um, time in the first place so yeah basically little nightmares 2 is basically just more better of little nightmares 1 <laughs> um just in a different angle, so a slightly different angle, you know, um, is basically what I was trying to say, um, which I, I think is good because that changes things up. It's not, it doesn't blur in as the same game. It feels like more like the next chapter of the same series is perhaps, or the next book in the same instalment, which is exactly what it is, um, rather than like the following chapter or still part of the same chapter. It gives it enough like unique identity, I suppose is what I'm trying to say. Um, it still falls into the same pitfalls, which I did not like in the first Little Nightmares game. And the main thing is the fact that it has, it sometimes has a reliance on like mechanical, like platforming sort of, I don't want to say ability, because that sound, makes it sound like my own ability, which, you know, it certainly is on my own fault. But I mean, like the reliance on the mechanical aspects of a game still fall flat to me, I think. Um, one... One big, a big aspect is that certainly in this game, there's a much bigger sense of like depth to the game, like um, of uh, the the, um, the z-axis, the in and out of a screen sort of depth, which of you know that depth perception often feels quite messed up in Little Nightmares because of obviously a lot of the environment, a lot of the time tends to sort of like wash out into each other, which is fine, like because that's like the aesthetic choice, but sometimes it's a little bit hard to see exactly what sort of jumps out at you unless it's like literally like a glowing button or a glowing TV screen when it's very obvious, but. Um, uh, my biggest problem is often when you require mechanical, like, finesse to do something, like crawl, or, like walking over something without falling, or, you know, sometimes a, a, a bit of a clunky movement makes platforming feel a bit more awkward, or, like, the battle sections feel a bit strange. I know there's an auto-target lock-on in the first place, but it also, it also feels a little bit clunky at the same time. It's not, like, it, it's not trying to be like mind you like um, a game with any sort of, with any sort of like mechanical finesse like Celeste and um, Holland and I do um, you know where they have like precise controls and that's the point I, I suppose is meant to be clunky it's not meant to be the most graceful thing because it is reenacting just a child in like a, a horror environment right whoa what's this was in a, an incredible time jump whoa who could have seen <laughs> uh yeah basically I had to go do something which on the plus side now I've got new glasses but um yeah well we'll just continue a conversation like um you know like five hours didn't already just pass or something uh probably not five maybe like four <laughs> but still um what was I talking about um I don't even know if I did what I needed to do here to be perfectly honest I what was I doing oh Little Nightmares 2 yes I was talking about that actually I remember now because I was talking about the things about Mika it was basically like but just of what I was saying was like mechanically Little Nightmares 1 and Little Nightmares 2 um I don't like the moments where it relies on the mechanical um mechanics in, in the game of things like platforming sections or whatnot always feel a bit iffy um it's not so bad in sections where there's not like a time pressure but when there's actually actual time pressure it feels a bit more iffy because i'm just like okay you know the, the mechanics in itself are meant to be kind of like clunky so they meant to have, well not they're not meant to they're not like clunky they're not like you use them you're like this is like poorly designed you use them and you're like yeah it's not like meant to be super snappy or anything yeah, to the tension of any of anything, but yeah, well, especially when we're in like time moments, like chase sequences or whatever, it always um, ends up feeling a bit iffy to me because I'm just like, you know, it's it's hard to get like much of a, a handle on, and you know, Little Nightmares is a horror, is esque. I mean, I guess it is a horror game, but uh, let's be fair. Um, but it's a sort of game where where I always say for horror games, the ideal state for horror games to be in, which is different for every single person, unfortunately, is that you are ba you basically get super super close to death slash game over state every single time but you just escape it 
barely every single time because that sort of gets your heart racing and you're just like whoa that, that was a really close call and that sort of thing because the problem uh, i actually think i talked about it in the little nightmares uh, let's play itself it with horror games is that once you die and you had to repeat a section over once it's okay it's not too bad but as soon as you have to repeat a section multiple times because you know it's difficult and you keep dying on it 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 loses all the all of the appeal that a horror game has at least personally for me like part of the the reason of a horror game is that sort of tension of like, oh, am I going to die? Am I not going to die? Is this like going to actually have consequences? Because obviously, you know, if you take a step back and think about it, you're like, obviously there's no consequence. It's, it's a video game. It doesn't really matter what even happens in the first place. But the part of the reason there's a tension even there in the first place is because of that sort of like uncertainty, I suppose, of like, you know, am I going to make it out alive? You know, is this going to affect me or not? You know, you have that sort of uh, innate human instinct to be like, I don't want to get caught or something like that. Um, but the problem is that that basically gets diminished every single you time you die in a horror game because it's like every time you die like i to me personally i feel like the immersion takes a step back a little bit and you get slowly further and further dr drawn out of like the, the immersive experience which is kind of like quite key for horror games in my opinion and um you can't sell things because it's now super late um you can't sell things uh, it's you, you get like um taken out of the entire experience uh, a little bit just a little bit but every time you die it just you know it, it becomes more and more i suppose you, you have more and more of a sense of awareness that i'm playing a game rather than like i'm experiencing something you know that's my own personal feelings which it didn't happen to, uh, at least i don't think it happened to me in little nightmares one but it happened to me uh one time in little nightmares two and i remember it's because of it was um the hallway sequence with the arms followed by the chase sequence with mannequins which by the way is still my favorite section of that game despite that which is really saying something about how awesome that entire section of the mannequins was in hospital but i died on it like five or six times and you know you, you could hear me in the video it wasn't like i was um but my sort of like sense of commentary sort of changed at least it felt like intrinsically to me where i approached it being more like okay now i need to gamify this is how i pass the section and you know i know that the arm's going to jump out there this is how i need to walk around it i know there's going to be like a crawling body there this is how i avoid it and to me personally i feel like horror games lose a lot of their charms when you start trying to employ a sense of strategy to them which is why you know five nights of freddy's i suppose really never appealed to me as much as i thought I, I will admit it's amusing to watch um, to a certain degree depending on the person oh, okay, uh, the, the person you're watching in the first place but then the thing is the Five Nights at Freddy's you you know you have to basically develop a strategy eventually to survive the later nights and then like as you play them and like the fact you're employing a strategy kind of feels like less and less like a horror game to me personally much more feels like I'm doing some like sort of mechanical based gameplay which is fine in and of itself but you know it's like when, when the entire premise I suppose relies on the, the, the creeping horror and retention um in the atmosphere in the first place i feel like reducing it just down to pure mechanics is not really what horror games are best at um unless the, the horror games got really amazing core mechanics but um i'm not sure what horror games necessarily do have that i'd, I'd, I'd assume amnesia does i haven't actually played amnesia but um but yeah and also of course you know when with like um tailored set pieces once you see where the jump scare happens or once you see where like an unexpected situation happens once you catch like a glimpse of a beast i suppose so like a lot of uh, the horror of a mystery the allure of the unknown is lost and thus it makes it a little bit more not humanizing per se but it does make it a little bit more what's going on with my cable here am i losing my mind and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to adjust my cable because my headphone cable is like a bit too long right now so i'm just sort of trying to pull it by my um my desk um it, it just loses a little bit of the allure and it feels a bit more like you know I'm, I'm trying to defeat the game i'm just trying to beat this section now rather than i'm trying to sort of get like lost in that world uh, that's my own sort of my personal experiences you you may you know agree or disagree you know you, you might be like when you start having to apply strategy you know it adds to the tension i'm like oh now i had to actually literally like fight my way to survive you know it's now it's now a sort of like do or die and if i don't you know do then i die <laughs> you know if i don't employ the strategy if i don't you know think about it like it keeps the tension up because you know one sudden mistake can like be all over for you and I, I guess it sort of depends on your relationship with the game overstate in horror games which is completely fair but luckily um, it can only happen with one time but i remember little nightmares too and it wasn't that bad because it was a pretty cool set piece it was a pretty cool section the, that corridor section of the hallway and um, with the, the mannequins in the first place so yeah um 
Uh, also, Little Nightmares 2 is, no, Little Nightmares 1 is definitely a game which has, like, a lot of hidden lore. I'm, I'm pretty sure in it, like, as, as you saw, like, look around. I don't know if it's, like, confirmed lore or anything, or if it's, like, a lot of it's based on speculation or whatever, but uh, I don't delve too far into that. I just kind of like the atmosphere and the replied story that it's telling you in the first place, which I think is um, intriguing enough in its own right. Um, what else do I think was good? What else do I think was bad? Um... This is major spoilers, I suppose, for Little Nightmares 2. Um, unfortunately, I think the ending of 6 betraying us felt kind of weird, especially <laughs> especially with the way I played the game. Um, because I, I assume, I don't know for certain, that 6 betrays you at the end because, you know, she she was already very apprehensive of you to begin with and then, like, you slowly started, slowly started building up her rapport and then suddenly there's a key pivotal moment in the game where you quote quote abandon her basically except for i didn't realize that it was a set moment where you were meant to abandon her um because i kept trying to rescue her instead because i thought that was what you were meant to do and i thought i just wasn't doing it fast enough and the only reason um i ended up like getting through that section in the first place was because i accident because well i mean i i think i glitched the game slightly and did kind of rescue her but then it just like thought i didn't anyway you know but obviously didn't script in mind someone like not playing the game that they expected they probably you know i'm talking about the moment where she gets crushed under rubble and you're meant to jump like to safety <laughs> if you haven't seen my let's play I, there's a button which you can use to hold hands with six and i basically just kept like holding a button because it would make you hold hands and trying to like pull her along so like she wouldn't fall over <laughs> so yeah that that made the story beat feel a bit like weird but that, that's like just literally only something which would only happen in my own personal experience of it um I'm I'm sure it like has a bigger impact um, if that didn't happen to you while you were playing the game. You know, it it sort of just made me go, huh? Because <laughs> it, it felt weird. It felt like an unearned, I suppose, betrayal um, in my story. But for a lot, for, I, I would say that's like a very niche sort of thing to complain about. And I'm not really complaining about it. I'm just sort of showing what my own experiences, my own reflections, I suppose, of it in the first place. I don't think it tracks away from the story. I think it's interesting, you know, you know, the fact that you played six in the first game and then now you're betraying yourself, I suppose, in the second game. It's all like, whoa, it's, it's, it's a weird sort of um, feeling, I suppose, to get betrayed by yourself. Uh, do we have enough space in our inventory for these flowers? Two more flowers, okay. I think we're gonna have to go to a drop-off box to actually sell these. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to think of what other things I want to say about Little Nightmares. Uh, I think the environmental design was cool. Uh, some of the puzzles were, I mean, the puzzles are fine, you know. I, d I don't really hold Little Nightmares up to, like, strong puzzle standards or anything because, to me, it's not a puzzle game. To me, it's just, like, a game with puzzle-esque elements where the puzzles are generally quite simple. You do one. Actually, to be fair, the puzzles were a little bit more interesting this time because I, I do remember there were some interesting puzzles with, with the TVs and the elevators and changing floors and, like, jumping out the elevator before um, you change floors and things like that, which is an interesting sort of twist. I suppose some simplistic puzzles in Little Nightmares 1, which very much sort of felt like, oh, you know, pull lever, go here, pull other lever, etc. Just do this with somewhat good timing. And uh, the staff sections are pretty cool, <laughs> to be honest. I, I think they gave it a, a, a nice amount of atmosphere. But yeah, um, I, I think a, a good highlight, I would say, is the fact that they, um, the betrayal of um, uh, the villains, of course, sit, um, notably Six and the teacher, um, because uh, they were much more humanised, I suppose, compared to them. Um, uh, some of it, some of the other villains in both this game and the previous game, you know, and I, I said this before, I think in um, my reflection, but it was like, the teacher's my favourite, it's because she has some very sort of human element to her. One, not only is she obviously based something in a much more realist, realistic, quote, quote, not a stretchy neck, but like um, the role, I suppose, she fulfills in, in the game, something which people might have even had a fear of, I suppose, when they were younger. But like, um, the fact her final boss section is like that piano scene where she's just there uh, like basically enjoying herself playing the piano completely oblivious um to what she sees as just like troublesome students rather than anything else it's, it's pretty cool i suppose you know it, it sort of like adds a layer to like not only she's not just like some you know evil blob or evil manifestation or whatever she's like manifestation which has a conscience which enjoys things which has a human ele element to it but still chooses to be you know cruel and evil and villainous i suppose i think that always adds a very interesting layer in my mind um, yeah, so, basically the long and short of that being, well, let all these slowly, slowly run over to me, um, long, long and short being, oh, being like, yeah, but the teacher is quite interesting, and of course, Six obviously has a humanising element, because, you know, we played Six as Six in the first place, 
And, you know, I, I think it was cool basically seeing the sort of bond between Six and Mono grow and then being sh shattered at the end. Um, because I always like my melon my melancholic endings, you know, I, I say that all the time. And, and you know, but my point still stands on before where unfortunately the melancholic ending didn't quite land for me because I it just sort of let me left me quite confused. I was sort of just like, what? <laughs> what? I, I'm not, I don't really sure I understand what motivated this, apart from like, Six really just still didn't trust us the entire way through, which I guess is like fair, but you know, it feels a bit weird. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, your mileage may vary depending on how you interacted with that in the first place. So yeah, basically on the whole, I thought Little Nightmares 2 was great, you know, it's the same sort of a thing, opinion I have on Little Nightmares 1, where, you know, if you go in it for certain things, if you go in it for like super amazing puzzles, if you go in it for like very deep mechanics or anything like that, you're not going to get what you want, to be perfectly honest, but that's fine because that's not what it's trying to do. It's trying to um, pull you into a very whimsical, horror-based, aesthetic, aesthetic world and like lose yourself in the moment, I suppose. And it's does a fantastic job about it. Its set pieces are fantastic, its environment is great, character design fantastic, and the, it just absolutely nails its atmosphere from from the get-go, I would say. Um, I don't really have anything else to say about Little Nightmares 2. I'm, I'm sure there's other things I've, I've forgotten, but, you know, I enjoyed it, is basically what I want to say. So, I'm going to round up this episode here. If you have been watching, thank you very much. It's been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Dear Darling. Likes, comments, subscriptions, shares greatly appreciated. My Twitter and Discord down below. Hope we can see each other again, but for now, it's a farewell. So until next time, bye-bye for now.